Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to today's video. I have another monthly meal prep video. So I do these style videos about every two weeks and generally it's stuff that I'm putting in the freezer and that you could double or triple or make as many times as you want to last an entire month for you. Um, it works out best for me to do every two weeks just because I have a smaller freezer and um, it just works best with my schedule to do it that way. So that's what I do. So today's video, I'm actually kind of putting a little theme on it and we're gonna do some things that are lunch friendly. Specifically, if you were packing your lunch for work, these are some things that Corey, my husband, really enjoys in his lunch for work. And most of them are freezer friendly, so you can make a lot of it and then eat it throughout the month whenever you're packing your lunches to go to work or wherever you're headed. There's a mixture of things that would be both for adults and could also be kid friendly as well. Personally, these are one of my absolute favorite style meal prepping videos just because, like I said, I do pack lunches for my husband and I'm always looking for new ideas and things that would go well for him. So some of these things you can eat cold and some of them you will need to warm up or else, I guess you could eat them cold, but they might be a little bit better warm up. I do want to let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by Isolator Fitness and this could not be a more perfect partnership for this video because it is lunch bags that you can take with you no matter where you go and they have a pretty genius system that I'm going to show you here. This is the bag that Corey chose. It is their three meal bag and you guys we have had so many lunch bags through the years for him and this thing is definitely the most high quality bag that we've ever had the zippers are super sturdy super durable the other thing i love about them is they are made in the u.s they make everything in the u.s and i love supporting companies that make their things here and make high quality products before I show you the other things that come with it, I thought I would kind of show you the compartments. So there is this middle compartment that's really, really tall in here. Then the side compartments, which I personally love that they have these just because my husband takes a lot of drinks and things with him to work. Then there is a top compartment with a little pocket up here. We've got the net um, on both sides here. And then it also comes with a larger strap if you would want to take it over the shoulder. But my favorite strap is this one that's on top here that is really easy to grab and go. Like I mentioned, they do come in a ton of different colors, so you could pick a color that goes with where you work or even maybe your favorite sports team. They come with these two ISO bricks that I slid into the sleeves on either side. They keep things cold for 16 hours, and obviously they would also be affecting the side pockets as well since that nice icy coldness is in there. And then it also comes with all the containers that you could possibly need for this bag and they kind of really genius with their space here so you slide them in just like this oh and these containers are also BPA free you can put them in the freezer and in the microwave and you can also throw them in the dishwasher which is a huge plus for me because I don't have time to hand wash most things so you can put two big ones here and then you can slide um, a smaller one in here and then since this has some room up here on the top um, it kind of gives a little bit. You can also push that up and then slide another small one inside of there just like that for the maximum storage space. These bags are made in Reading, Pennsylvania, which is kind of cool since we are originally from Pennsylvania. It's close to home for us. And this is all that comes in the three meal kit. Isolator Fitness also has other little things that you can add in, like their shaker bottle. I have to open this up and actually show you the inside because it's pretty cool. My husband is really excited to use it. It's got this little tool on the inside that does a great job at shaking up your powder or whatever you're going to be mixing up in the shaker bottle. And you can also find my code Adeline35 to get 35% off of your order. You can check out their website in the link below where you can find other little add-ons like this one. And you can also find out how you can get 35% off of your order with Isolator Fitness. These guys are great and I'm really happy to be partnering with them. Our first recipe today is one that I've come up with on my own and it's a great way to use up roast beef 
that you've cooked and thrown in the freezer. So this is what I do a lot whenever I make up a big roast and we end up not eating it for leftovers. I will kind of shred it up and I'll throw it in the freezer in a Ziploc bag. So I've thawed this out. And you can also do this same idea with ground beef. So if you don't have this, just get yourself a pound or two of ground beef and fry it up in the frying pan. Um, or you could just make a roast and do this. So here I've got some low carb wraps. These are from Aldi. They started making these and they look really good. They're red pepper hummus flavor. You could do a gluten free wrap and this whole thing would be gluten free. You could do whatever style wrap you wanna do. And then I have some sweet onion and some bell pepper here and some mozzarella cheese and some mayo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put a little bit of olive oil in my frying pan and I'm gonna slice up the peppers and onions, get them in there, get them kind of soft, and as they get to the point where you would wanna eat them, that they're tender, I'm gonna put in some of the shredded roast beef, stir it all together, and then I will put a little bit of mayo right on the wrap, put the mixture of the beef and the peppers and onions in the middle, and then I'll add in some mozzarella cheese, and you have a great Philly cheesesteak wrap that you can modify to whatever diet needs you have, and it's really pretty healthy. And then what you can do is just keep them rolled up in the freezer and pull them out and heat one up to go with you to work. You could wrap it in some tin foil if you wanna try to keep it warm for a while, or you could take it to work and heat it up there. Or you could even eat it cold. I think this would be delicious cold. Sometimes things that have been heated before and then cooled down really make the flavor great. Here is the roast that I shredded up and then I totally forgot I grabbed this. It's from Primal Kitchen, but it's their steak sauce. It is sugar free. We've never tried this before, so I'm curious to see how it tastes. And then I also forgot I had some shredded Parmesan cheese that I'll be mixing into it as well. Something that is in Corey's, I would say top five things that is a favorite of his for lunch is chili. So I'm going to make up some chili, but we did just have um, that first wrap I did. We split it, Corey and I did, and it was so delicious. He agreed, he's super excited. I have more that he can pull out and make for lunch or take with him if he needs to. So we definitely give those a good five star. They were delicious. And now I'm going to dig into making my chili. If you've never seen me make my chili, I make it without beans and it's pretty simple. All right, I know a few of you have made this and said that you really enjoy it. If you're somebody that likes chili but doesn't really 
care for beans or if it just fits into your dietary needs this is a really great alternative to a chili with beans in it so I have some sweet peppers I ended up using one pepper um, instead of both that I had washed up earlier these are left over from another recipe so I'm gonna dice all that up dice up an onion put that into my Dutch oven I like making soups in my Dutch oven a lot they're really great in there and then um, I'm going to cook these up really well until they're soft then I'll be adding about a couple pounds of hamburger ground burger you can add as much beef as you want to to it today I have extra beef I need to use up that I had thawed out so it's actually gonna get three pounds in it but there are times I've done it with one pound two pounds it's fine and then I have two bags they're just different brands they're the same thing of cauliflower rice and that will go in last. Also, I put in some cumin, onion powder, garlic powder, chili powder, and then I also add salt and pepper. And I do all that to taste, so I don't really have measurements for that, but you can just shake it in as you go. And then I think I'm gonna use the isolator containers that are this size to put the soup in to put into the freezer. So we have some that are individually uh, ready for lunches. And then the rest of it, I'll probably just put into a gallon Ziploc bag and we can pull it out to do chili dogs. Two of the recipes we're doing today, we're gonna need bacon for, so while the uh, soup ingredients are kind of sauteing over there, I'm actually gonna throw these into the air fryer. I'm gonna do the whole pack up so we have enough for everything that we're making. Okay, you guys, so you know that I like to tell you whenever I flop a recipe or <laughs> I just like to be real with you on this stuff. So I don't know how, but somehow I totally forgot to get the tomato sauce and the diced tomatoes for my chili, which is usually what I put in it. So I'm gonna show you in just a little bit, a little substitute I'm gonna do. We'll try it out. I think it'll work out okay, um, but happens to me too guys happens to me too I get through half of a recipe and realize I don't have all my ingredients so the next thing that we're gonna do is not freezer related at all it's actually um, my broccoli salad which is one of the things that we need the bacon for super super simple to make um, I don't even do measurements I'll show you what I do but you can do it by taste because some people like theirs a little bit more sour like with the mustard and some people like a little more sweet and one little tip I do have for you whenever I make broccoli salad is I usually take the broccoli crown and actually tear it apart with my fingers because when you get a knife involved with broccoli if you've ever cut up broccoli you know it becomes a mess it just like because all of the little top pieces come off of the broccoli and they get everywhere so if I can depending on the recipe I really like to actually take my hands and just kind of shred up the broccoli and then it kind of holds together and makes for less of a mess All right, to make the sauce for this, you need some Worcestershire sauce, some mayo, and some mustard. 
And then you can use sugar, or if you're sugar sensitive or trying to eat keto or anything like that, you can use a sugar replacement. One of my favorites is this Swerve brand, and this is the confectioner's kind. I just figured it might be handy to have instead of having the granular to where you have, you can tell that there's granular um, sweetener in this. So I'm just gonna mix this up to taste. I normally do um, about, I don't know, probably cup, cup and a half of mayo. And then I do a little squirt of the yellow mustard and the rest to taste. So I'm gonna mix this up in here and then dump this in here. And then I'm gonna shred up some cheddar cheese and cut up some of the bacon and mix it all together. Put it in a container and put it in the refrigerator and then I can pull it out and put um, smaller amounts of it into smaller containers to send in his lunch. Okay, so like I said, I don't have any tomato sauce, but I've got some tomato paste and some chicken broth. So we're going to put both of these in, mix everything together, let it simmer for a while, little while, and hope for the best. All right, you guys. So I used to work outside the home, um, and obviously Corey still does, and one thing that we both really like in the morning is a breakfast sandwich. So I'm going to be making some breakfast sandwiches that are a little bit different. They are gluten-free, and I will say this, if you're somebody that does not care for eggs, you're not going to be into these breakfast sandwiches, but I've made them before and they are super, super yummy. You can do a lot of different variations with them and they're great to keep in the freezer, pull out and just heat up in the morning as you're on your way out the door. Okay, the idea of this is pretty simple, pretty easy to put together. So you just need a mini waffle maker. I will leave this one linked below. It's an Amazon find and I really, really like it. It comes in a ton of different colors and some other prints and even some other shapes. Um, it's the best like 10 bucks you'll spend and it works really great. You guys, if you watch my channel a lot, you know that I make a lot of stuff in this little waffle maker. I've had it for a while. Um, so basically you wanna put about two eggs per sandwich. Um, into here so we're gonna try to make two waffle thingies out of this actually they're called chaffles I believe I think that's like the term that everybody uses for this style of like breading for the outside of sandwiches so we're gonna put about two eggs in here we're gonna put about a tablespoon of almond flour and then we're gonna whisk that up together I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and probably some onion powder once that mixture is together we're gonna put a little bit of cheddar cheese across the waffle iron, we'll spray it first. Put the cheddar cheese across, put half the mixture on, put a little bit of cheddar cheese across again, close it, and then let it cook through. While we're waiting for those to cook, I thought I would show you how this turned out. I think it looks really great. It smells amazing. And no, it doesn't have quite as much of a tomato look and uh, flavor to it, but it's still really, really good. So there you go. If you're in the same pickle as me, the tomato paste and the chicken broth worked out pretty well. So I'm gonna pull this off and let it start cooling.
right, now we are ready for assembly. And what I'm gonna do, I have these kind of stuck together. You can see how great they look, nice and cheesy, delicious. I've done this actually before with Parmesan cheese as well, super, super good. So what I'm gonna do is actually make the sandwiches in tin foil because we can throw them in our air fryer to reheat them. Obviously, do not put tin foil in the microwave. <laughs> So you could also wrap them up in saran wrap or put them in containers or put them in Ziploc bags, whatever you want to do. Um, another option to heat them in the tin foil is just to put them in the oven while you're getting ready for work and then pull them out right before you go. I am really excited to try out this recipe. So this is going to be some tuna patties and I've made different variations of these before but never one like this. I did find this recipe on Pinterest and I will leave it linked below. It's got some lemon juice, some mayo, obviously tuna, some butter, egg, and then crushed up pork rinds similar to breadcrumbs. And I've been using these in some different recipes lately. If you guys watch often, you already know that. And every single time I use them, they just add another texture, another flavor, and they're really, really good. This specific recipe actually suggests to make these up in a waffle iron. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm sure you could totally fry these in a frying pan um, instead of doing it this way, but this is a little bit more fun. It kind of makes them into a bite size for lunches that are quick and simple. So I'm gonna put these in here and then while these are being cooked up, I'm actually gonna make up some super simple tartar sauce. So you're gonna need some mayo, some dill relish, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of lemon juice in. Also, to sweeten it, I am going to use that swerve. I didn't get it out, I forgot to get it out. Um, but you could use sugar as well. And tartar sauce is definitely more on the sweet side, so you do wanna put a good amount of sweetener or sugar in this to make it taste like tartar sauce. So I have to say that those tuna patties are definitely the best ones I have ever made. So if you need a good recipe, I would highly recommend checking that one out. A few things about it is make sure that they definitely cook long enough that they get kind of a crunchy outside. And also they're a lot more like soft and tender when you take them right out. So let them sit a little bit and then they'll kind of toughen up to where you could pick them up and dip them. And also you wanna lay them out flat on something and flash freeze them first before you would put them in a bag to freeze them for a longer period of time so they don't stick together. Anyways, that's everything I have today. Don't forget to check out the link below to see the Isolator Fitness bags and if and if you're new around here i hope that you subscribe i also have a vlog channel and a cleaning channel that i'll link below don't forget to leave a comment and i'll see you guys in my next video